All right, so this is our tub. Um, jacuzzi tub. It's a big corner tub. It's old. It's green. It's it works great. It's just kind of nasty. You can see some of these uh, covers need to be replaced, or, or something has to happen with them. The jet covers, uh, faucets are old. Uh, the, the cover is removed, but it still it, it fits on there. The the uh, access the access cover there. Uh, I use that because I want to turn all the water off because what we're going to be doing here is reglazing this tub with uh, the armo armor glaze armo glaze <laughs> I don't know but we're gonna be I'm gonna be reglazing the tub so today what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get the tub ready I have some supplies here I don't know if I'm gonna need everything I think I'm not gonna go with the the sander because I think what everybody's telling me and what I'm saying is you could just chemically etch the tub and that's enough so I got some uh, Lysol toilet bowl cleaner, which is basically a, a, a you know a medium, I guess a mild acid, maybe a little stronger than mild. And this can they do this can take all the soap scum off and basically chemically etch the tub so that the the epoxy can adhere better. So some scouring pads. I figured this would be a good way to apply the uh, you know apply the uh, Lysol. And also I have a tack cloth. I, I was going to use this if I sanded, just in case, you know, the outside maybe or anything had any spots that I couldn't really hose down as easily. And this is to get any kind of dust off. I don't think I'm going to be using this stuff, and I hope I'm doing this right. You know, I hope I have the right approach here, but we'll find out. Um, I have obviously some, some rags and some thick uh, painter's uh, blue tape there. Gloves, because you don't want to get... This stuff on here, these are just nothing special, just rubber coated gloves. Uh, and then I have some scrapers here. One, one's really a putty knife, but I, th I think that the spackle knife will um, be good to get the old caulk off. I've already removed some of it a couple weeks ago because it was just in bad shape. And uh, a little scraper here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get started. And well, what I have to do first, obviously, is we're going to remove... I'm going to remove this here. So I'm going to jump up here. We're going to remove... This should take two seconds here. Just got to get these things off the hooks here. It's a really old, uh, really old shower curtain <laughs> system. But uh, it works. It's an odd, this is an odd configuration as you can see here, this tub. So, so, you know, some of the things are a little old. But I didn't want to get rid of it because uh, getting rid of a tub like this, you know, you're looking at, I mean, I, I can do the work. It's not that complicated. It just takes time. But it's pretty expensive to replace something like this. And um, it works great. It's just a weird color. The whole bathroom had this green, kind of like forest green. I don't know what you'd call this color, uh, schema to it. So I replaced the toilet. That was a green toilet. And I replaced the sink. It was, it was a sink that had, uh, they were green. They were green sinks. Actually, I could show you. They're in the yard. You can see, here's, here they are right here. Let me see if I can open this. <laughs> They were really kind of funky. Let's see. If this focuses. Will it focus? I don't think it's going to. Alright, here they go. Let's see. If anyone cares, they were green, weird sinks. So I replaced them. And uh, as you can see, uh, you know, I'm basically removing all of the um, the green. From my bathroom we're gonna keep these old tiles because they're on they're on a wet bed so that means basically they're cemented down with a thick coat and they're really solid they're not the nicest tiles but that's a project for another day and you know I don't want to get into all that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on a tripod tripod uh, and uh, you guys can kind of just watch as I scrape this clean because I do need uh, maybe two hands free to do all this work that I'm going to do now all right.
<laughs> so there were some little imperfections as you can see here in the tub that I'm deciding to sand out a little bit. There's another one here. I don't know what they are. They're like burn marks or something fell. Who knows? I mean, they, they sand out. So we're gonna, I'm going to sand them out. Keep hitting anything weird I see with the sander. I decided to sand all the uh, Hulk remnants out, as you can see. Uh, it's just hard to get up, and I figure if I just sand it, it it'll, um, you know, be smooth. As you can see here, I mean, I got the tub pretty much prepared as far as the sanding goes. I think we're all pretty good there. The tub's pretty grimy, obviously. I'm going to have to probably take some bleach and clean all this because it's pretty funky. Um, I don't know if I want to get any of that toilet bowl cleaner there. It might not be a good idea. People say it does mess with the, um, the finish of your tiles. I don't know. Maybe I can dilute some and clean it with that. So I do have this old fixture that I'm going to be replacing. Uh, the hose is here, the old hose, and I got all brand new uh, stuff to put on there. So I'm going to take this hose right now and just rinse all this stuff down because I don't want it mixed in with the toilet bowl cleaner. All right, so I'm just going to hose it down. Hopefully my caulk is gone, so hopefully I don't get too bad of a flooding if I just work quickly. So we'll see. And I think I have the hot water on. Yeah, it's getting hot, so that'll probably get everything pretty good. All right. And I, I think that's going to just about do it. Let's see. What's up here? All right. So that'll do that. Now I'm going to turn the water back off. See, I'm just kind of getting everything I can here with the uh, mild, uh, somewhat mild acid. I don't know if it's mild. <laughs> We're gonna call it that, cause uh, you know, we hope it is. It's got a little on my arm, it's starting to sting a little bit. It'll uh, get me to work a little faster, I guess. So get it over here. And I'm gonna do the front of the tub uh, separately, the front panel. I'll just put that on the horses when I'm done here and go do that. And, um, let me see if I got one more of this. This is a big tub, so I'm going to use probably more than if you're just doing a regular tub. This is pretty, uh, obviously pretty large, you know, jacuzzi tub here. I didn't see anybody do these jacuzzi tubs in a line. I've seen some people revise against it because you could potentially get the, um, the epoxy into the jets so i'm just going to be careful and try not to do that obviously hopefully i can avoid that i mean i really obviously don't want to do that i think i can avoid that i mean i'm pretty pretty handy so hopefully you know i'll be resourceful enough to not get any uh any in the jets that won't be too cool not that i ever use the jets anyway but you know don't want to do that I think I got everything on a tub now. Pretty much. I'm gonna wipe my arm off here. Stuff is starting to burn a little. Mild, mildly. It's not something that you know you get on your skin and you're you know you're not gonna be like going to the hospital, but try not to get it on your skin. You can avoid it. Alright, so it looks like we're pretty well coated here. I got the front. We're well coated. I've I seen other people online say basically to wait 10 minutes and maybe give it another scrub down and then um, and then uh, wash it off. 
I don't think I'm going to do another scrub down because I really can't get in the tub that good and I can't reach all the spots anyway. So I'm just going to give it a few minutes and just wash it off and we'll see how it feels. If it feels like it's really super grippy, I, I think I'm all right, you know. We'll give it about 10 minutes. So I'll see you in about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So keep in mind, guys, that you know you should uh, open a window. <clears throat> I should really open both, but I didn't. Because uh, this stuff, it does smell like kind of minty. But it does get to you. So keep that in mind. Um, there's a lot of scum here. So now I see why people may be kind of advised to go twice and scrub it afterwards. So I can't really reach that without getting this stuff all over me. So I'm going to try. I have this little scrubber thing. Just a little. I'm going to try to see. That's a real bad spot there it looks like. So hopefully this will get it off. And it looks like it's coming. I mean it is coming right off. I don't even know if I needed to do that. But the water action alone but it just took it off. So I'm going to try to scrub everything with this. As you can see. Just kind of getting all spots here. I mean I'm not going to get probably 100% but I think this stuff will get most of it off anyway I'm just kind of reinforcing it I guess with this and helping it to come off so I'm doing this with one hand holding the camera I'm probably a little unsteady there and the reason I wanted to make this video actually I don't know if I said that <clears throat> was because no one's done this video on a jacuzzi and like I think I said earlier people advised against whatever reason and I, I don't see why I did buy um, two kits of the uh, the uh, <clears throat> armor glaze because this tub is obviously much larger than a standard tub and the last thing I wanted to do was run out in the middle that would not be a, a good thing so it, did, it was fairly expensive at $300 to get both kits I was able to go on eBay and um, and I was able to uh, do a buy it now and, and put in an offer. So that kind of helped. I think I got one for like 130 something. That kind of, but still, it was close to 300 bucks for everything. But yeah, what I'm doing now is just, uh, sorry, my hand's not the uh, steadiest with this camera and doing this. But I think you guys get the idea of what I'm, what I'm doing here. This isn't rocket science, this part. Not that any of this is rocket science, but. Yeah, just trying to, because that, that soap scum was, oh, there's more there, so you see that? So watch, you can see this really just seems to take it right off. See, it's like kind of going now. Now I'm going to have to get in there, I think, and after I rinse this tub out, I might have to get in here and just get another scrub. That stuff's really, uh, you don't want that stuff. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to rinse the tub out now and see how it looks. I'll put this right on my horses for now. Well, I gotta actually put it on there for it to stare it. So let's see, I got my, um, I'm gonna turn the water back on. I did turn it off earlier. I'm gonna use the hot water again. I think that does do a little bit of a better job. But this stuff is pretty caustic. I mean, I got the window open, but it's, it's, uh, it's not fun to breathe in. So let's put this on now. Let's see here. What do I do here? Oh, this one. Let's see here. So hopefully this will get rid of some of that caustic smell I'm breathing in. And I'm hoping that the hot water maybe works a little better to uh, wash this stuff down too. I'm probably gonna have a leak downstairs. That's all right. I'm going with spackle. I'm kind of being a little messy with this. And the other thing I want to do, I realize now that I'm probably going to do it, I do want to take these off, so I'm going to do that afterwards, I guess. I probably should have done it before, but I think it'll be all right. I'm going to do it, and then I'm going to um, maybe sand them down or hit them with a little bit of the acid. I don't know, whatever works better. I think most of that, well, it's hard to tell, but most of that stuff is in a spot right there, if you can see it. We'll see, there's a couple spots. I'm gonna get in there and scrub that one more time. I really wanna make sure this is uh, nice and clean. 
definitely don't want to do this and then screw it up after all this work. If this is this could be. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a rag. Let me turn this off. I'm gonna take a rag I think, and get the front of this clean. So I mean I don't think I need to explain that. I'm just gonna take one of these rags, wet them off. And uh let me see here. I got a couple rags over here. I just try to get some of this stuff off. This is stuff, like I said, you don't want this stuff sitting in there too long because I'm sure it would do some damage to the finish. Alright. I mean, hopefully we're uh, getting pretty close here. I guess we'll find out. Back in here and I just scrubbed the tub with my bare hands. I mean, I just had some very diluted uh, chemical with water very diluted and uh, I was able to get all the scum off but I looked around these uh, jets and you can see there's so much scum around them still so they look at this you gotta come off 100% not that they weren't going to um, I'm gonna try to do that now so I, can, I can just turn these things I remember this one's pretty much shot I might try to repaint these and refinish them I don't know if it's gonna be possible but I'm gonna try they're really expensive and uh I just don't know if it's uh, going to be feasible to buy new ones. So, a little word of advice. Uh, these can be, these are really old and they're beat up, but they can be incredibly difficult to remove. Some of them came off really easily, and other ones, uh, they didn't. I had rubber gloves and I dried everything so I get the best grip I could, and they just weren't budging. And, and I'm a fairly strong guy, I mean, but they just weren't budging. So, what I had to do with the last one I couldn't get, I did slightly damage. I scratched it a little. Maybe I, can't, I don't know which one it was. I can't even see. The scratch wasn't that bad, I guess. But I took this here, this here, and I kind of wedged it on here. And I kind of wedged in and bit the metal a little. And then I hit the back of this with my wrench until I got it to move. So I just kept hitting it and hitting it and hitting it. And it took a, a good amount of hits on that last one to get that freed up. But I, I really couldn't think of another way. There may be a specialty tool for this. I don't have it. I'm not planning on buying it. Um, I would just sooner, you, you know, get them off the way I did and buy new new covers if I got it. Because they're only, you know, that much money. But I'd rather, maybe I might do that. I don't know. Because they are pretty funky. I mean, they're, they're, they're really, you know, this is all sludge on there. But still, the finish is just shot. I'll see. So, I got them all off. Um, so, what I'm going to do now is these are still... Pretty funky all around. I'm going to take uh, a diluted mixture of the, the Lysol and I have a little brush here. A little, um, where'd I put it? This brush. And I'm just going to brush them down and let it sit for a couple minutes and then rinse them all down again. And then after I get everything clean, I guess I'll be able to uh, take the drain out. I have a special tool for that. It's a, a, a drain wrench. As you can see it has openings that fit inside the drain I'll show you uh, like so or maybe this way well looks like this one's not fitting in here so <laughs> maybe this one fits no no so if my drain wrench is not working on this it's not the right size as you can see it's just not it's just not lining up in there um, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it in there or not if not I'll remove the drain um, a different way there's another way you can do that all right so I took a bristle brush and I scrubbed these and I uh, waited a few minutes and then I um, kind of just rinsed them I scrubbed them again after everything set in one more time then I rinsed them and I think they're, they're I know they have little stains on them but they're they're fairly free of any kind of um, anything that would stop the epoxy from adhering to the green I'm really just worried about the green section around them so that's all I really care about and I'm going to wind up taping them up I guess because I don't want the epoxy to obviously get in them which is I'm realizing may present a little bit of a challenge but I want to do what I got to do here I'm going to tape them up and maybe after the epoxy sits or about an hour or so once it's like hard maybe I'll remove the uh, tape then because I don't want to let it sit too long and then I, and I imagine I won't be able to get the tape off 
So, um, I'm gonna have to get that drain out too. But I wanna do that last because I do wanna remove these and I do have to do this front section. I might just take that in the yard and do that separately. And, and then, um, maybe I'll even epoxy it separately in the yard. I, I don't know if it's the best idea. I have a garage I could do it and maybe that would be a good idea because there's just not enough space up here for this large piece. Okay, so see you soon. I was able to take the uh, channel lock handles and stick them in here and, and turn this. It actually turned pretty easy. I used a wrench to loosen it and then it was able to turn, but it's still not coming out because we got this, uh, this nut in here. So I'm gonna take my uh, my uh, ratchet set and just try to un you know, take to loosen that so I can get that done. So once I get that out, <clears throat> that little guy, hopefully the whole thing comes off. And then um, basically, I'm going to clean the tub. I got some brand new rags here. I'm going to take uh, rubbing alcohol and just give the tub a really good cleaning and degreasing one last time. Then I'm going to go down to the basement or the garage, I mean, and show you the setup there and probably sand that, that shit outer piece, the outer cover down a little bit and then uh, take some rubbing alcohol, clean that up. And I'm going to have to do that down there on the horses because it's gigantic. So the only problem is I have the temperature in here set for 76 degrees, which is somewhere around what they said you should have, and I am roasting. The uh, <clears throat> the one in the garage obviously is going to be at whatever temperature the garage is at, which is fairly cool, but I don't think it's going to be a problem because it's not really getting a lot of wear and tear like the inside of the tub. So even if it didn't set up quite as good as the rest of the tub, I mean, it's you don't even touch it. You just step over and it just hides all this ugliness down here that I'm going to try to clean up a little bit. It's really nasty. But this, these spots are really where you want it to set up right. And that's why you want optimal temperature, optimal cleaning, degreasing, whatever you got to do. Because, you know, obviously, if this don't come out right, you, you know, you're either replacing your tub or you're doing this whole process over again, which I don't think would be fun <laughs> to remove the old stuff and start over. <clears throat> so... We'll see you guys soon. So this un this unbolted fairly easily. Just use my uh, ratchet set there, my ratchet, and you can see all this disgusting gunk. I'm gonna obviously take this whole drain apart and clean it out and everything. It's really nasty. There was a gasket here, really old, fell apart. Might have been plumber's dope. So I'm gonna obviously um, apply new plumber's dope after I'm done. This is really brittle. I think it's plumber's dope. It looks like. So obviously plumber's dope is like a play-doh. It's kind of just like the consistency of Play-Doh. You just mold it. Uh, and I can show you guys how to do that. It's, it's fairly easy. You can watch a video online. It's, so I'm going to clean this out. And then clean the whole tub. And then I guess um, go downstairs, take care of the other front panel, get that prepped. Tape everything off and then get started. So I got my uh, two kits of Armo Glaze. Uh, two kits. Cost me almost $300. One on eBay, one on Amazon. They made, they may have been from the same company. I'm not even sure. They both, I guess they sell on. Yeah, it looks like they're from the same town in Illinois on the boxes. So yeah, they look identical. Same parts for each one. So each one of these has got to be mixed uh, 10 minutes. Uh, I'm not going to use, I guess this. This is the etch. I already did an etch, so I guess I don't need that. So what I'm going to do is mix this in here, this in here. I'm going to mix them both for 10 minutes by hand because that's what they recommend so you don't get any bubbles. Uh, so I'm not going to be able to hold the camera because I'm going to be using two hands. And, and, and I don't think you need to see me mix anything for 10 minutes. I'm just going to get a paint mixer. I'm going to mix them. When I do mix, I'm going to be making sure that I, I get everything off the sides real good. get the bottom. Make sure you get a really good consistency and you get everything mixed really thoroughly. So that's really important so that the part B will activate the part A or vice versa. So, that, I mean, that's just, that's important. That's why they say 10 minutes, just to make sure that you get everything mixed really, really good. So what I'm going to do is I've seen a little tiny couple drips of water coming out of these things, a little, little bit of water. So what I'm going to do is uh, my wife actually grooms dogs, so I got this hot air blower that she dries the dogs with. I'm going to just blow everything out really good all around the sides and everything else. And hopefully that'll uh, make sure everything's dry. Uh, right here, a long time ago, I did do a little Bondo repair on this tub. That's why it looks so weird there. 
I did, I, I painted it uh, green with a paint that I found at Home Depot that matched very closely. Then I put a little clear coat on it. It held up for a while, but wasn't that great. It, it just wasn't able to withstand the wear and tear of a, you know, and the moisture and everything else of a bathtub. So I did sand that, sand that down pretty good, and this is Bondo. Hopefully that'll, that'll be covered pretty good. I also have my, uh, my uh, bathroom's a mess here. I do have a heat gun that I purchased just for this job. I didn't own a heat gun. I mean, I do a lot of work, but heat gun's just not something I've needed very many times. Uh, if you don't have a blower like this and you want to dry the tub out really good, I mean, yeah, I guess you could use the heat gun. Alternatively, a hair dryer I'm sure would work good, but apparently you don't want to use the hair dryer on the actual chemical to help pop the bubbles because I think the air is too strong and it could actually move the chemical around and create an uneven finish. So you want to use the heat gun, which is just primarily heat and not so much air. All right, so let's get started. One last thing, I did wedge a cup down here. As you can see, it's a little bent up. It's a Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee cup there. And it's kind of wedged under there just to collect anything that might fall. Although I'm not really too worried if something were to fall because it's just going to go you know, in between the in between the ceiling and floor and it's not going to be that much. But I'd rather catch it maybe even if I need to reuse it. I don't think I will because I have two kits. So, see how this goes. I like fashioned up this little thing here. I cut a 2 liter and I left this little area like a, like a scooper. So I'm going to pour the stuff in here and hopefully I can scoop it up when I need to and re replace it. And I can just hold some in here to pour. So we'll see how this works. I saw someone on the internet do this. I don't remember what video or where. I, I, and it looked like a pretty good idea. So we'll try it out.